Oh, hi, I'm Dr. John. Have you ever wondered what happens to food after you eat it? Hmm. Where does it go and what does your body do with it? Well, today we're going to take a trip inside the body to see what you do with food after you eat it, a process called digestion. Are you ready? Here we go. Wow. The whole process of digestion starts in the mouth with biting and chewing. Chewing food before you swallow is important because it breaks it down into smaller pieces and it allows it to mix with saliva, which is a special liquid in your mouth that helps moisten food and make it easier to swallow. After food is all chewed up, where does it go? Well, the tongue pushes it to the back of the mouth and past the throat into the esophagus. The esophagus is a long tube that goes all the way back past the heart and the lungs and into the stomach. Looks like we're all prepped to go down to the stomach. Hmm. That's a really long way down. Wait, Dr. John, you can't just jump from the mouth to the stomach. It's too dangerous. Oh, well, what do you think we need to do? You need to train. You need to prepare. You need a montage. What? It all starts with the bite and chew, teeth grinding the food, that's what they do before you swallow. Oh, before you swallow. Once that food is all mashed up, push it down the esophagus because it's hollow. Oh, because it's hollow. Peristalsis moves the food down It's a one-way trip to the belly so round Then to the stomach, kicks in the high gear Churning with acid, it has no fear You gotta have guts Guts To turn that food into fuel You gotta have guts Guts Get your energy renewed You gotta have guts Wow, that was unexpected. And my friend was right. There's a lot to learn about digestion. Why is it so complicated? Hmm. Well, digestion's a really big job for your body. Think about this apple. There's a lot going on here between the skin and the fiber and the juice. When you eat it, your body has to break it down into tiny little parts so it can go through your intestines and into your blood vessels. And that's what digestion is all about. Getting the energy and vitamins from food into your body so it can power things like your muscles and your brain. Why don't we travel down the esophagus into the stomach so we can learn more? Are you ready? Whoa! The stomach is like a stretchy bag that holds food after it's swallowed. It's actually really muscular and it uses those muscles to mix up food. When the stomach is empty, it's only about the size of your fist. But when it's full and stretched, it can be almost as big as your head. Whew, that doesn't sound comfortable. The surface of the stomach creates something called stomach acid. Stomach acid breaks down food, especially proteins and it helps get rid of germs like viruses and bacteria. Remember the sugar bugs in your teeth? When you swallow, if any of them get down into your stomach, the stomach acid works to get rid of them so you don't get sick. Goodbye. Sometimes when we swallow or eat certain foods, we can get extra gas in our stomachs and that gas can go up the esophagus and come out the mouth as a burp. Excuse you. When the food is done in the stomach, it moves next to the small intestine. The small intestine is a long, twisty tube, and that's where the magic digestion occurs. It's where the pancreas and the liver add special juices, so that helps break down food and makes it easy to digest. Once the food is really tiny, it can finally be absorbed into the bloodstream. How does it do that? 
But these little things floating around are called villi. And they're like little fingers that grab the tiny pieces of food and bring them inside. There they go. Wow. What gets absorbed in the small intestine? Hmm. Well, vitamins like vitamin C from pineapples or oranges, minerals like calcium from milk or green vegetables, protein from eggs, beans, or meat, fat from oil, meat, or even some plants, and carbohydrates, which is a fancy word for sugars, from fruits and bread. And that's why we need to be smart about the foods that we eat. The food that enters our body becomes part of our body. You are what you eat. Now that the small intestines has absorbed the energy and the vitamins, everything that's left moves into the large intestine. In the large intestine, most of the remaining water is removed, and what's left is fiber and undigested parts of food and even some bacteria. Where does it go next? Well, to the toilet. What's left at the end of the large intestine is what we call poop. It might seem gross to talk about poop, but you know what? Pooping is a normal process. Everyone does it. Wait, Dr. John, you can't just um, leave the colon. You have to finish your training. Oh, what do we need to do now? You need another montage. Stomach acid does its job, turns protein and fiber into a blob while it keeps churning. Oh, keep on it churning. Small intestines next up to bath, chewing up carbs, protein, and fat is good for burning. Oh, it's good for burning. Through 20 feet past the lion tubes, absorbed with vitamins and filled in the groove. Step on past the appendix, my dear Into the cold and there's nothing to fear You gotta have guts Guts To turn that food into fuel You gotta have guts Guts Get your energy renewed You gotta have guts Okay, it looks like some healthy snacks are coming our way Can you reach out and grab the fruits and vegetables with me? But skip the hot dogs and donuts. They're not a healthy snack. Are you ready? Let's go. It's speeding up. Let's go faster. We did it! In the cold and the water's absorbed There's not much left, no time to get bored It's been a journey to get this far Now find a toilet and be a star You gotta have guts Thanks for joining me on The Dr. John Show. We'll see you next time. Bye. Guts.